today's video, I'm going to show you what you can expect to find in the general series or the title sheets within a set of construction drawings. So let's, let's go. go. So today we're going to focus on the general series, which both commercial and residential construction drawings usually have. This section might not always be called the general series, so I'll show you an example of that later in this video. This section or page is found at the front of most drawing sets and is essentially a title or cover page to summarize the construction project that you'll be working on. The general series or these cover pages is the first section I always look at when reviewing a new set of construction drawings. After I familiarize myself with the details of the project listed on this cover page, I then scan the rest of the construction sections to get a broad understanding of the different disciplines that will be involved, that being your civil, structural, architectural, etc. After I complete a general review of the disciplines, I then do a second pass where I further dive into these disciplines individually. If the architect can provide a model of the building, I'd highly suggest that you ask for that. That way you can have two monitors going, one with the drawing set and one with the building model. This will just help you more easily digest the drawing and the project in general as you're going through these pages. So in today's video, I've actually got three different drawing sheets, all general sections that we're going to take a look at. So let's get started with the first example. Okay, so to start us off, I'm going to read the title and description at the top of the page, which tells me the project name and the type of project that this is. So this happens to be a renovation to a recreation center. It shows me the address of the project, which I could plug into a Google Maps and find out some further information about the area. This would be extremely important as a general contractor or a construction manager to help understand the logistics of building this project. For instance, is there a lot of space on the existing plot for laydown of materials? Is this new building going to be sandwiched in between? between two other buildings, so there's no space for parking or anything else? Is there a highway close by for deliveries? These are just things that would run through my head as I'm reading through this. I'd also always suggest completing a site visit as well so that you can physically see everything that's involved in addition to reading these drawing plans. So this set says that it is the 100% construction document set. This means that this drawing set is actually intended for construction versus your DD set, which would be 90% or your SD set, which may be 75% complete. As long as you have all your permits released then you can go pull them and you can actually start construction also on this page i'll just take a quick look at the renderings provided to get a general understanding of the finishes and the general building materials that will be used in this space next it looks like they've provided a summary of abbreviations and terms which is great to know so if we're looking through the rest of the construction set and see any of these abbreviations we'll know exactly what they stand for or we can reference back to this page to see what they stand for i'll note that abbreviations may change from project to project so never assume what an abbreviation might stand for when looking at different sets of construction drawings. I typically see a symbol block on the cover page as well, which we don't see on this one, which explains the symbols an architect may use to help direct you through the construction drawing set. We'll see an example of this later in this video. I'll also add that each other discipline, that being civil, structural, plumbing, mechanical, electrical, should also have their own cover or title page, which should include their own set of abbreviations and symbols to reference within that discipline set. A lot of other people tend to look at drawing sets and get bogged down in the meanings of different symbols and not know what they're looking at. So always reference back to these cover or title sheets to know what the symbols and what the abbreviations mean and it'll just be a better guide to understand what you're actually looking at. Next I'll note that most general sheets or series or title pages also include a drawing index which is a total sum of all the drawing pages that you'll find within the project set. In this case you can see that the design contact responsible for each of those drawing disciplines or series is noted here. As you can see, it also shows each sheet number that we'll see on each of those drawing pages. The point of the contact though is, is important throughout the project because this is who is responsible for answering RFIs in respect to that drawing discipline or who will be providing the punch list at the end of the project. On the far right side of the page, you'll see a set of blocks which will actually be carried throughout the entire drawing set. At the top, we see key players logos, design information, maybe the owner's logo. Just below this logo block, you'll see a stamp. The stamp indicates the architect or engineer of record responsible for putting together these drawings. Prior to permits being released to the actual construction company, the architect or engineer of record will actually go through the city or potentially the state who will also stamp the set of drawings for their approval. Most jurisdictions will actually require the construction company to have this hard copy and stamp set from the city and state on the job site. This is in the event of when the inspector comes out to the site, they have something to reference. 
So last couple items in these bottom blocks is just a recap again of the project name and the address. Uh, this revisions block states if there was an update to the specific page and will usually provide a date associated with that change. These can be in the form of addendums or construction bulletins. So finally, bottom right on this page, we'll see the sheet number and sheet name. These are key when trying to reference information or communicate with someone on where they're looking at something, if you're talking to them over the phone, or if you're just communicating information back and forth via email. Okay, let's jump into our second example here. So right off the bat, pretty similar information and pretty similar layout. You'll see the far right block of information is almost identical. You will notice that instead of a G, they have TS, which stands for title sheet. Again, this is just based on the preference of the design firm putting together these documents. What I want to point out though, is that the sheet further provides symbols and materials and a drawing key. Let's take a look at that. So starting at the top, this materials legend will be referenced later in the drawings. When we see these different materials used, we'll know exactly what they mean and what what they are. If we forget, we can always reference back to this general page and look at this legend. The drawing key is great, and the first example I showed did not have this. So, at the top we see the grid lines. This shows how grid lines are identified. So in construction, imagine working in an open field with nothing to reference. How do you know where to position the building or where to build? How do you construct things relative to other building components? A surveying company generally provides one or multiple GPS control points prior to construction that various trades can actually reference back to. It's called the control point because it's set by one company instead of multiple companies relying on their own points. The control point in conjunction with your grid lines are used as reference points so that you're all building cohesively. So the next symbols are your section cuts, your plan and elevation views. I actually cover this in my overview of reading drawings. If you haven't seen that video yet, I highly suggest you start there. Okay, let's flip to our last example. This in my opinion has the most amount of information which is always beneficial to the construction team. In addition to what we've previously previously saw, this general sheet also provides general notes, which you have to read all of them to ensure that you're meeting the requirements of the project. It also includes applicable codes, a vicinity map, and more symbols explaining how to read and understand the drawing set that you're about to look at, as well as a scope and existing conditions. I won't go into all of this, it's just general reading at this point, but it tells you what to look for and what you need to do as a contractor. So there you have it. No need to go any further in depth than that because most of these general sheets are pretty simple. Usually they're limited to one page, if not just a couple. The lessons learned in general is that when you're reading these drawings, skimming is a no-go. You have to read all the notes and you have to reread all the notes. There may be one small hidden note on any one page that if ignored or missed could cause a ton of headache down the road. Even if you're responsible for only one trade, let's say you're a plumber or an electrician, I still highly suggest that you read the entire drawing set because architects and engineers may have notes within other series or sections that may refer back to your discipline. This is obviously good to know because it prevents headaches and coordination conflicts down the road. Okay, so that's it for reading the general sheets. Bye for now. now.